GT710, a GPU that was never meant to be used for gaming. But even to this day, some people or even some companies still build PCs with really old i7 CPUs and GT710s and advertise them as gaming PCs. Now obviously GT710 is not a gaming GPU and first gen i7 is not that strong of a CPU, but not everyone has this basic knowledge to know what to purchase when they're shopping for a gaming PC. Which is how one of my relatives ended up with a GT710 gaming PC. It had a second gen i7, 8 gigs of RAM and a GT710 in it. It was purchased many years ago when COVID was still a thing and the prices were all over the place, but I think they could have bought something better, like a 3rd gen or a 4th gen i5 with a GTX 750 Ti at the very least. Now that would have cost them the same, but at least it would have gamed a bit better and it would qualify as a gaming PC. But anyhow, today we're testing GT710 and I'm curious to know what it's capable of. For the testing, I'll be using an i5-10400F to make sure that we don't get bottlenecked by our CPU. We'll be testing everything at 720p because the person that purchased the PC had a 768p monitor, which is really close to 720p resolution. To capture the gameplay, I'll be using this EVGA XR1 Lite capture card so that we don't lose FPS by capturing the screen internally. Let's begin with CS2. We are running this game on the lowest preset and we have FSR disabled because the game looks really bad with FSR on. Initially, I thought that I'd get around 60fps and 720p low settings, but I was wrong, we're barely hovering about 30fps. The response time is shockingly good though, but that doesn't make up for the lack of FPS. If I was really craving for CS2, I'd be fine with this, but it's honestly not a great experience. Although, it is bearable. Now we could turn on FSR, but we wouldn't be able to see anything at that point. Besides, we're playing a shooter and if we cannot see the target, what's the point of having many FPS? Overall, I actually had a great time, there were no stutters and the FPS was quite consistent. Another shooter that I tested was Valorant. As we all know, Valorant mostly uses CPU. This game has extremely low graphics and it is perfect for people that are on a budget and cannot afford a better hardware. I've actually been playing quite a lot of Valorant recently and I played most of it on potato hardware, but I've been having a lot of fun. No matter how weak or how old your hardware is, this game doesn't care as long as you have a semi-decent CPU. I mean, we could be running this game at 1080p resolution and we would still get way more than 100 FPS. Yes, you can literally play Valorant competitively on GT710, who would have thought? The response time and the overall smoothness of the game is not far off from my main PC which has a Ryzen 9 and an RTX 3070. Speaking of smooth gameplay, Minecraft didn't disappoint us either. This game uses such a small amount of GPU power that you can play it on integrated graphics and the iGPU will actually get bottlenecked by the CPU itself most of the times. Also, we're not even running this game on the lowest settings, we're running it on fancy settings and if we wanted to run it at 1080p highest settings, we'd still get smooth experience with hundreds of FPS. It's not like we need more than 60 FPS in Minecraft anyway, of course the more the better, but in this case it doesn't really add much to the game. So now that we have figured out that the GPU has no problems at all with these low requirement games, let's move on to something a bit more demanding like World of Warcraft. My relative purchased that GT710 gaming PC for this exact game after all, so I really hope that it can achieve at least 60 FPS in this game. We'll be running it on the lowest settings at 720p resolution. Now since this is an MMO, there are many areas which are extremely different in terms of how much stress they put on the GPU, so I'll be testing it in a dungeon that is pretty much like a middle ground between the most demanding and the least demanding areas. Right off the bat we are seeing around 60 FPS without any noticeable stutters. If we got less than 60 FPS then I would have been really disappointed because imagine when you buy something for that one game that you wanna play and the computer can't even run it at 60 FPS. Of course 720p 60fps on the lower settings is far away from anything you should be satisfied with, but at least the person was able to have a semi-decent experience with this PC. By the way, I did upgrade the GPU and the rest of the components for that relative of mine, now they're gaming on a Ryzen 5 1600, GTX 1650 and I even gave them an M.2 NVMe SSD for fast loading times. Now they're able to play their favorite game on the highest settings. Next game on our list is League of Legends. We're running this game on medium settings, and like Valorant and Minecraft, we can also run it at 1080p resolution because the game's graphics are not that demanding. 
Same goes for Dora 2. So far, GT710 handled all of these games without any problems. I enjoyed playing them and I honestly wouldn't mind if this was my main rig and I only wanted to play the games that we have mentioned so far. Well, minus CS2, but I prefer Valorant anyway. Of course it's different in its own way, but I really would be satisfied with this much computer if I didn't play anything else. As for more demanding games, I tested GTA 5 and I gotta say that it didn't perform too bad. The FPS was in mid 40s most of the time and when there was a lot of happening on the screen, it never went below 30, which is good. If the FPS goes below 30, it becomes really uncomfortable to watch and it just hurts your eyes at that point. I also played a bit of campaign and even though I didn't have consistent 60 FPS most of the time, I still had fun. If you have a GT710 and you really wanna play GTA 5, by all means go ahead, it'll do its job, but generally for games like this, I would normally prefer to have at least a GT730 to have that smooth 60 FPS gameplay. Our next game will be Tomb Raider. Here I chose the lowest preset and I gotta say I was expecting a bit more from this GPU. I remember when I tested HD4600 which is an Intel 4th gen integrated graphics and it gave more than 70 FPS in Tomb Raider at 720p resolution, which is odd because GT710 is miles better than HD4600 in gaming and I don't understand why this GPU is giving worse performance than some iGPU that is a decade old that shouldn't have been able to achieve this much FPS to begin with. This part honestly confused me as all hell, but either way, the game is running smooth and there are no stars to be seen whatsoever. And the last game we'll be testing this GPU in will be World of Warships. This game has similar requirements as World of Tanks, so you can assume that if this GPU can play World of Warships, it'll play World of Tanks as well. I chose the lowest preset because we didn't have much of a headroom to play on higher settings. Now even though we are seeing well over 100 FPS outside of battles, when the action is high and a lot of ships are firing at the same time, the FPS will drop all the way down to 80s or even in 70s and if we set the graphics to medium, that FPS will go below 60 and you'll start seeing occasional stutters when the game has to load a bunch of textures. So I just recommend leaving the settings on low. Besides, there's barely any difference between medium and low settings in this game. I would much rather have higher FPS than small, barely noticeable visual improvements. To summarize everything, the GPU is honestly too weak. I'm not a fan, never was, but if you have it, might as well use it. There are integrated graphics of modern 10th gen and up Intel CPUs that are better than this GT710 in every possible way. And in case you wanna go AMD, you're gonna have even better experience because they make really good integrated graphics and you can honestly game on them and have an amazing time, unlike on this GT710. It was never meant to be used for gaming and these tests are the proof of it. The games that we were able to play on this GPU were also playable on the 4th gen integrated graphics that we tested not so long ago. Overall, I was hoping that this GPU would perform a bit better, but I'm not too impressed because it's a GT710, what can I say? It was simply created to display an image on the screen, which it did and hopefully will continue to do so because that's what I use it for. Whenever I'm testing some old hardware or even the new ones and I need a GPU to display an image on the screen, this is my go-to graphics card. It has all of the ports I need and it is modern enough not to cause any issues when plugging into various hardware. On that note, we're gonna wrap up this video. Thank you guys so much for watching, and as always, I will see you guys in the next one. Bye bye.